My name is Mervyn Davis. Um, I really wanted to cover three subjects, really. Uh, the first is uh, lemons. Uh, and you may wonder what the hell that has got to do with, uh, with banking, and uh, I have no idea. But um, I'm hoping the speech works out. The, the second <laughs> is uh, I want to talk about uh, I want to talk about the current banking environment, but I also want to talk about the experience of being a, a chief exec, as I was of Standard Chartered. Um, let me start with lemons. Um, there was some reference to Apple. Uh, and I've now realized the media is here and it's being recorded, so I've had to change my uh, speech slightly. Um, you know, when I think of Apple, uh, when I think of Apple, I, I think of uh, a customer experience that is great. In, in the, the retail experience is warm, it's friendly. They, they teach you things you feel, you feel as if you are having a great customer retail experience. They create products that are totally reliable and they're very innovative. And in many respects, I don't see any reason why banks can't be the same. So I think in many respects that uh, you've got the apple on one side and now the lemon. Now, I like cooking and basically uh, I was reading a book, sad person that I am, about lemons. And uh, now, hands up those of you, because I know you're a highly intelligent, skilled audience, but you are a lot of you bankers. Um, hands up those of you that would recognize a lemon. Could you, those of you that don't recognize a lemon, could you speak to me afterwards and I'd like to know where you work. Um, <laughs> lemons, look, lemons have a culinary and non-culinary uh, use. Today, as Alfred Newman said, we live in a strange world where lemonade is made from artificial coloring and furniture polish is made from real lemons. But you should laugh at that one. Uh, lemon, <laughs> lemon, this is going to be a tough audience. Um, lemon is the worldwide term, uh, both for the th thorny tree and the fruit. Lemon trees can grow, uh, and obviously I know you're all experts, uh, from about three meters to about seven and a half meters tall. The lemon, better use this arm, uh, is yellow, elliptically shaped. It's a berry. It's got a very tough rind, and it contains oil, which is used in the manufacture of perfumes and a variety of products. The lemon is very versatile, but when it's green and nearly ripe, the fruit is picked from a tree, sometimes six to ten, ten times annually. Now, Somebody here, because I want this to be a little bit interactive, always difficult, um, who would like to have a guess as to how many lemons you get from one lemon tree? A mature lemon tree. Somebody have a guess, come on, shout out. 300. Sorry? 300. Okay. Um, a mature lemon tree can produce up to 2,000 le lemons per annum. The lemon has been said to symbolize fidelity and love, friendship, longevity, and purification. And there are lemon festivals. This gets really even more boring. Uh, th there are <laughs> lemon festivals held in California, Italy, Peru, Argentina, Thailand. There's one thing about the lemon. It's a global brand. It never lets you down. You don't like it particularly. You'd never pick a lemon necessarily as your favorite berry or your favorite fruit, but it's always dependable. If a lemon as a global brand, suddenly you pick it up and it's got no juice or the rind is very different, you'd have a very different view of the lemon. <coughs> One lemon has 15 calories and was, interesting, interestingly enough, one of the first eight flavors, you can use this in Trivial Pursuits from now on, was one of the first eight flavors of Jelly Babies launched in 1976. The average lemon contains eight pips. I can see people now really wondering how long this is going to go on for. <laughs> uh, the word lemon is believed to be derived from the Asian language word for sour or sour fruit. And a single lemon can give you 40 to 70% of the, 
of the minimum amount of vitamin C that you need in a day. It's said, and those of you that have experienced this, it's good news. Those of you that have experienced a lemon in a dream, <laughs> it's being videoed, it indicates success, happiness, and confidence. Those of you that have dreamt of lemon juice in your dreams, it indicates a very sad bitterness within you. <laughs> so, here's a versatile fruit and berry used in salad dressings, limoncello drinks, uh, it's used with fish, it's used to make cakes, lemon drizzle cake, it's extraordinarily versatile, it's always dependable, and it's very, very global. You go all over the world, and in some places it's used for medicinal purposes, it is, as I said, reliable and versatile. But it's a brand that probably, if there were such a thing as a brand manager for this, they would want to make it a little bit more friendly and want it to make it a little bit warmer because it is not, whenever you ask for people for their best berries or best fruit, it never comes up as their top three brands. So what is the, how does that relate to a bank? Well, banking was a lemon. Banking was a trusted industry that you knew it was reliable. You knew that, you know, you may not like your bank manager or you may not like the, some of the things, but it was always trusted. Now, we are considered lemons. The industry has brought on itself the most extraordinary catastrophe in the West. And who knows what's going to happen in other parts of the world as, as crises unfold. But one has to say that it is ironic that today, if you go through all the bank CEOs, you look at all the speeches over the last 12 months, all they talk about is trust. The reality is that the industry has let down society, and it doesn't matter what the reasons are, whether it was political, whether it was regulatory mistakes, whether it was bank boards, whatever. The reality is the industry lost a huge amount of trust and brought on to society in many parts of the world a huge problem. Now, the great thing is that if you've got a problem, the first thing you need to do is recognize it. Banks recognize this. They are trying to rectify it. But deeds are more important than words. And I would say that um, when you're a customer of a bank, I would disagree on the comment on Apple. If you are a customer of a bank and you get a mortgage from that bank, this is probably one of the most two or three most important things that you are ever going to do and you're securing a, a, your property for a period, you know, for your life and certainly you're engaging into a huge long-term relationship. But banks have not quite managed to make that a feeling of great success and enjoyment in the same way that Apple, as we were referring to, uh, have done. So I think now there are three issues that the customers are looking for. Firstly, uh, they are looking to see whether the banks have learned anything and whether the banks are listening to them. The second issue is, is the bank putting the customer ahead of profits? I think the other issue is that um, can I truly create a personal relationship with this institution? I think that there are words that go with banking, financial services, such as trustworthy, professional, knowledgeable, expertise, expressions such as easy to do business with, treat you like an adult, approachable, offers a face-to-face -face service, personal, helps, to, helps me to achieve my objective, is the partner that I can rely on. Th those are the things that the customers are looking for, and at the base level, every bank is, has to be ethical, local, and treat their staff well. So I think that at the moment, post-crisis, I think customer confidence in, in financial services, fueled by the politicians, uh, is very low. And yet, the banks are doing huge amounts to rebuild the trust. Now, I used to run a bank, and, and I don't now, um, but although I'm on the board of Williams & Glynn's, which we're, which we're buying from RBS. I do believe that there's never been a time more than today where the CEO owns the brand. S Chief executives of banks have to be obsessive about ownership of the brand. 
they also have to deliver for the shareholders. And I think the thing that's going out of the window at the moment is, uh, I think you have to do both. You have to walk and chew gum. You have to produce for the, for the shareholders, but you also have to produce a service and an ethic and, and, a, and a, an offering for the customer that is trustworthy, reliable. So I do believe that the chief executives uh, are going to have to do even more to focus on brand building. I do believe the segmentation of the customer base is going to go even deeper in the industry. And I'm not just talking about retail, I'm talking about SME, mid-market. I do believe that more and more personalization of the product offering is going to be required. We, we all talk about mobile banking, we all talk about internet, we all talk, but you know, it's only um, a decade, 20 years ago, that basically the mobile wasn't as influential in our society. There was no Twitter, there was no uh, real social media. I do believe that the banks are slow in comparison to other uh, sort of companies and other industries. I own, I'm a non-exec of Diageo. I look at the way in which the social media world is transforming the way we market uh, our drinks and I do believe that banks are going to rad have to radically upgrade their efforts on social media because if you have the wrong image in the new world of social media then it doesn't matter what else you do you've got a problem so I think that um, banks are going to have to empower it's easily said difficult to do the local feel of a retailer because banks are retailers the branch manager, he or she is going to have to be more of a local feel, to be part of the community, to be seen, to be doing something quite extraordinary for the village or for the town, because that's the way you rebuild trust. I also believe that brand ambassadors will be more and more important. The sales staff have to be embody the brand more than ever before, which means that the engagement of your staff, staff and employee engagement in banks has got to be the best of any industry. Because if, tr if your trust level is bombed out for the industry, your staff engagement scores have got to be higher than other industries. I do not believe they are generally in UK banks. We will hear from others and you may disagree, but I think there's going to have to be huge focus on employee engagement. Um, I, I want to just, uh, just shift the uh, slightly now onto the challenges of being a CEO. When I was a chief exec, it was much easier than today, uh, which is why I'm glad I am, I'm not one. And you know, you look at it today, the regulators want to kill you. If there are any regulators in the audience, I apologize. There are exceptions, but the regulatory environment is very tough. The media is not exactly friendly towards an industry that's caused so much distress. So regulators, media. The politicians absolutely love the banks. I mean, it's very clear, don't they? They absolutely love. So the politicians are not on side. The mass market, mass opinion is against. When you look at that and you've got regulatory pressure building, there is total confusion across the world on Basel III. There's total confusion in the industry on Volcker rules. Are we gonna have a US rule? Uh, we're gonna have a European rule. We're gonna have, you know, the industry, this is a global industry that needs global standards on regulation, on uh, bonuses, on comp, on whether you can do investment banking or whether you can't, what should sit in a bank and what shouldn't. This idea that we're gonna have a British uh, sort of imprint, a US imprint, and a, a different approach for Europe versus Asia, it will lead to the next crisis. And the next crisis is going to be in non-bank financials entering what is a highly regulated industry. So I think we're asleep at the wheel if we think that by allowing new entrants that are not regulated is great. I, I do believe that we're sowing the seeds of the next crisis. So I think the bank CEOs are, are really have a tough job particularly when Basel III and everything else is putting pressure on ROE, the returns in banking coming down, and yet the customer wants more. So in summary, I, I think that, um, that 
The UK is different to some other markets, and I'm not being critical of, of the current incumbents, but I do agree with the political arguments, and I, have, I was a minister in the last government. I do think a huge amount of market share is concentrated in a few hands, and that cannot be good long term. So clearly, the new entrants like Tesco, you know, obviously more than just a new entrant, many other players, and Williams and Glynn's included, yeah, we face all sorts of challenges on IT, on the branding, et cetera, et cetera. But the reality is we do need more, more banks in the, in the marketplace, but we need the level of customer service and innovation to really go up a level. And you go out to the UK, go to retail branches in Korea, go to Hong Kong, go to other places, and just look at the state of the branch compared to what they are like in the UK. And I would argue they're significantly better outside of the UK. So there's a real challenge at a time of huge you know, capital pressure, a huge challenge in how you upgrade the quality of retail banking uh, in the UK. So if I was summarizing, um, here is a, uh, a fruit that is basically uh, trusted, just as the banks were. The banks, are, it's gonna take time to rebuild the trust in the banks. However, uh, the politicians have to stop their full frontal attack on the industry. They really do. It's time to draw a line uh, and, and we have to accept, yes, there were mis huge errors of judgment on mis-selling and all sorts of things. But you know, the UK needs a vibrant financial services industry and certainly London does. And if we carry on the political attacks, uh, it, all we will do is eventually kill what is a in hugely important industry. Um, I would now like to sort of change tack slightly because rather than you have to listen to, um, you know, sort of a huge number of debates, it's just have five minutes of, of any questions in the audience or have I killed you with the story of the lemons? <laughs> Nobody died, that's good news. Um, so could, could you expand a little bit on what you said about, um, you, you said you didn't want to be a CEO in a bank now. So, so, so what, has, what has changed between now and when you were doing it? It's not that long ago. No, I, I, I'm not saying I wouldn't want to be. I, I think it's a very different job. Uh, uh, you know, I, I think that they, they are fundamentally different skills required. You're balancing now, you, you know, it, I, I would argue 10 years ago, um, there wasn't as much need for you to be so involved with the media. There wasn't as much need for you to be so engaged in, in brand building. And, it, you know, you've now got, you've certainly got legacy issues on a, a lot of the bank CEOs on mis-selling, you, you name it. So there's huge litigation risk. So I would argue that um, bank boards have changed. They have become more nervous. The regulatory environment's become no, more nervous. So I think bank CEOs are really having to figure out what is my space. And I would argue that now a bank CEO has never, ever had to spend so much time on the brand. The brand is at the center of everything. I mean, what, what I did when I was CEO, I wanted Standard Charter to be one of the top um, brands of the world, and you know we achieved it. So I, uh, you know, 100 brands of the world. And, and I think that brand building, I, I think one forgets you've got tens of thousands of people to manage, and you've got complexity of risk. I do believe that one of the challenges for the industry, I have yet to meet, and maybe it's in the audience, I've yet to meet somebody who's a great manager of people. He or she understands VAR. Oh my goodness, are they expert on corporate finance? Wow, do they understand MPLs on mortgages? And wow, are they the world's expert on credit cards and uh, retail banking? There is no such being. And so one of the arguments for uh, more of a separation between investment and, re and, and corporate and retail banking is it's very difficult to find um, the people who, who can do both. So I, I do believe that investment banking can sit with commercial, but I think the structure, you have to have expertise. And I think in a number of the banks, the people were totally out of the depth. They didn't know what they were doing. Lord Davies, this is not a question about lemon. I think we've uh, covered the subject. But building on the, the, pre the previous question, uh, would you mind sharing um, your experience and some of the, of the facts of when you were a CEO? 
the way you were thinking about brand management and the way you acted about brand management? Um, I've always been of a, a, a sort of, I think you have to know yourself as a leader, whether you're a bank CEO, whether you're an executive, you have to know what your strengths and weaknesses are. <coughs> if you know what your strengths and weaknesses are as a leader, as a business person, whether you be a managing director, a CEO, whatever. Um, and, and I think the more you know yourself, the more you will compensate in your team for people that have complementary skills. And I've always been obsessed about brands. I've always been into that space. So it was a natural thing for me to be involved in and to get you know, sort of hyperact hyperactive in. But I think that, um, you know, I, I do think that in assembling today a team to run a bank, there has never been a time where you need truly, you know, international standard marketing expertise. You need in-depth social media knowledge. You need people who have a deep understanding of how to rebuild trust. Yes, you need the FX experts, you need the you know, risk experts, etc. That's just part of day-to-day -day management. So what I learned at the time is, and it was the Asian crisis that taught me, that you know, those of you that know Asia well, you know, property prices dropped 50% in a few weeks, the markets dropped 50%, and it was mayhem. It was, it was just as serious, if not more so, than the crisis we just had. I learned that you need people with different skills from risk and marketing at the center in terms of brands. So, I, and I think today, a lot of chief executives, uh, current company excluded, obviously, uh, are not really bringing in enough experts to help them on the brand. Because sure as hell, this is an industry that is still in intensive care. Okay? Thank you very much. When you, when you cut your lemon for your gin and tonic or whatever you might want, hopefully you'll give it a little tap before. <laughs>